So I am here today with two amazing individuals who have both been on the show numerous times before and are both doing a huge amount of creative things. And I've got them both on to talk about something that's quite uh, important to them in certain ways, and that is religion in general and their connection with God and that sort of thing. I've been doing it a lot more recently. I, I spoke to Radhika Rao, who Tanya put me into uh, contact with, and obviously spoke to her about Buddhism. So go check those uh, two episodes out if you haven't already. But I want to continue this. I, I've recorded a conversation with someone else about uh, their sort of connection with God, and I'm just kind of on, oddly enough, on the God train in a little weird way, even though I'm not necessarily a believer, but I'm just really intrigued at hearing people's thoughts on that. So to kind of swoop straight on in, let's, let's go straight for it. BZ, what is your religion what, what how would you define it if someone asked um well that's that the the word religion is primarily a world worldly term mm -hmm. um and i'll entertain it from time to time just for purposes of explanation but um if anyone would ask me what my stance is that would probably be a i guess a more pc uh term to use mm -hmm. um is primitive Christianity. Um, and for those who don't know what primitive Christianity is, um, it, it stems from the original birth of just the church. There were no denominations. There was just the church. And the church in itself fell upon what most people would understand as the day of Pentecost. So, um, and that was primary within the age where the apostles, you know, roamed the earth and, uh, spread the gospel. Um, and so that was basically it. There was no denomination. There was no, no there were no different sects or whatnot. It was just the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that was it. So that is it, it's called the apostolic or the apostles doctrine. That is the doctrine by, of, by which I am living in which, which leads me the path that I follow is just primitive Christianity from the very birth, nothing, anything that's new, um, uh, that came afterward, just from that point, therefore that point forward. Um, it's a lot, I would deem it a lot simpler to uh how would i say it deem it a lot a lot a lot simpler to understand and one thing i do know is that we'll never fully understand this thing ever there are thousands thousands of books of the, of the bible thousands most people aren't even aware of that um but there are 66 books in a canonized version and even in those 66 books the information is inexhaustible we'll never come to a full understanding of it mm-hmm yeah, well, that's an incredible answer. It's um, is there's a lot to unpack there. But before we delve into that, I want to ask Tonya then. So the same question for you: How would you define your religion or your connection to God? And if there is a different word to use, like, please tell us. I think mine is more of a simplified version of what BZ said, which is: I believe in the covenant, love God and Jesus, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well. Wow. And would you define that as a uh, religion? Is that term something? Because I've no, I I mm -hmm. don't. I wouldn't call it a religion. If, when people ask my religion, I do say I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. but I feel like I need to clarify a Christian in the true sense of the word, not the Christians that are represented in the media, mm -hmm. because I don't believe that the majority of those are real Christians because they are obviously not following the covenant. If if what they are doing is spreading hate that by definition is not christian mm -hmm. yeah i agree completely and it's one of the things i quoted from yourself i can't remember where you said it it might be on social media or on discord but it was it was mentioning that star wars fans ruined star wars and you connected that with christians ruining or christians in air quotes ruining christianity right. and i i've got the note there of, of it is it is one of those terms it's one of the reasons i want to speak with people like yourselves and um, other individuals i've had on my show is because when I was younger, especially when I, I went to Catholic school uh, until I was like 10. And then in, in my teenage years, I was very anti-religion in all respects. I heard about some of the atrocities that have been um, done in the name of various religions across the world and across history. And due to my connection uh, with Catholicism when I was younger, neither of my parents are Catholic. Um, because of that, there were certain things I'd ask questions and I'd be told not to ask, ask certain questions. And I would be told off for my inquisitiveness and things like that. 
And so I had a very bad taste in my mouth for the religion for for quite some time. And then sort of in the last five or 10 years, um, I'd probably say 10 years, it's really started to change. And I've kind of started to open my horizons and perspectives on the varieties of things. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to speak to both of yourselves, because I know, um, especially with yourself, BZ, you um, on your social media posts, and whenever you say, uh, contact me, and uh, we speak in things, you mention God in everyday conversation. And it's it's a very it's not as traditional anymore. People don't seem to do it as much, but whenever you do it, especially, it's uh, like just saying, God bless you at the end of a message. It's actually, it's a very warm, nice thing to say. So I wondered if you could tell me a little bit about your connection with God and in respect, why you reflect that on social media. Not that that's a problem by any stretch. I'm just, it's interesting right. uh, to see it. Well, um, first things first, in regards to reflecting on so- social media, one thing that I know, and, and I always deem myself, I, I've termed myself this, is Christian super soldier. Um, the one thing that I know about being a Christian super soldier, number one, is I'm, I know I'm not flawless. I know I'm not perfect. I absolutely know that. And I know that my job um, with uh, ministering the gospel is not to shove anything down anybody's throat but to be informative and to answer questions to the best of my ability. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not never going to fully understand this at all ever will. I never will. Um, but the situation is when I, when I put it out there on social media, especially because I, right now I have a Wednesday broadcast continuing in, uh, the form of my former radio broadcast come out cause I'm not on the radio anymore. But when I was on the radio, I would do a live Facebook feed while I was at the station. My situation is, look, dude, you were given a gift and your gift wasn't to be used for the quiet storm. And your gift is not to be used for talking women out of their panties. Your gift is used for bigger, better things than that. So, um, and again, I never wanted to do radio when everybody told me, dude, you should do radio. I didn't want to do it, but I wound up doing it for eight years, but it was kingdom based. So I don't turn down kingdom work. Same thing with audiobooks. I never wanted to do audiobooks. Now I have four under my belt because they're kingdom based. So I don't turn down kingdom work. Um, a buddy of a buddy, I would call him uh, a father. My father in the faith always tells me, keep the faith, walk in faith, live in faith, and you can't lose. Um, he told me a couple of things. He says, and I, I'll never forget them. He told me, never turn down work and always give God your best. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. So I'll put it out there that I give him honor and glory for everything that happens. Um, even right now, I'm going through a trial right now. Um, and I'm like, hey, okay, it is what it is. I'm at peace with it. I'm not fretting. I'm not stressing about the situation. I do. I've come to the, the point in my life to where I have a full understanding that adversity is always around the corner. Peaking, always. So and there's a scripture that says. prepares you for what's to come. That adversity is actually training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Tanya is, is, is preaching. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Um, the thing is, one thing I know is, and, and we've, and we've had this conversation before, I, I, and I've said it, um, we, we grow in the hard times and we enjoy that growth in the good times, but there's always around the corner peaking a bad time, a hard time, ready to sneak up on you and pounce. But the thing is, is due to the fact that we've grown, just like Tanya just said, we're better equipped to deal with it. And we're better equipped to help others deal with similar situations. Better speak on it, sister. (laughs) So um, I'm going to, I'm going to actually, this is sort of, it's kind of funny, but it's actually, there's actual truth to it, especially with, with what it is that Tanya just said in regards to helping others. Um, because in every testimony, there's a test and in every message, 
there's a mess. Marinate on that. That's amazing. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of things that could be just taken out of this as perfect sound bites already, and it's. I'm not going to. I'm going to obviously the point of the show, <laughs> so everyone has to listen. You got. You get a little snippet. I'm going to have to pick the right one to really tease them and draw them in. But that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I love it. it. It's one of those things as well where, when to go back to sort of your social media posting and things, it is something that I've. People like yourself and like Tonya have always made me turn more towards uh religion in a sense of being like you know these are the examples of the individuals who strive as sort of tonya said earlier in what a christian should be and i've always said you know i believe that jesus was a person um and the idea of his message i've never disagreed with is his whole message of as tonya said earlier sort of love thy neighbor and those sort of things it's th- the core values of in my view the majority of abrahamic religions if back to their very core strip back you know a lot of the uh, complex doctrine and that sort of things the the core values i think of most religions in all honesty is just love and goodness kind of should prevail that's the idea you know different religions have some have rewards or punishments or kind of things so i want to ask sort of you tonya with you yourself how would you define sort of your relationship with god uh and that can be on an everyday basis or uh in your sort of just general life but if someone asks you that and you kind of think about god in itself how how do you connect with that thinking about your core question which is how would i define my relationship hmm. i'm constant my relationship with god is constant i talk to god every day multiple times a day in good times and bad you know you have to be grateful for your blessings but god is there for you to to rely on when you have trials and tribulations. Show me the way. Help me get through this. I trust that I can. I wouldn't have this on my plate if I weren't strong enough, but I need to know how. So it's not just fix this for me, you know, make this work for me. It's help me fix it for myself. Show me how I can do this. But it's also thank you when you show me the way and thank you. Thank you for these problems because, you know, as we were talking before we got started, I have a lot on my plate right now. And it is difficult to manage. But if these are my problems, that is a blessing. That in itself is a blessing. Oh, no, I have too many projects. I have too many people who want me to do too many things. Wham. Thank you. Thank you for this being my problem. I feed every day. You know, (laughs) I have a beautiful home and cats and, you know, loved ones. And I'm doing great all things considered but my stress level is high because i'm being torn in multiple directions that's a blessing and you're someone who thrives on being busy busy as well Well, i am a bit of a workaholic but (laughs) i i could i don't know the last time i wasn't at least active in something i my brain moves too quickly for me to sit and be stagnant I would come up with a project, whether it's a volunteer project or a creative project, or just, I'm going to create this challenge of reading all of these books. I would find some place to put that energy. Now I try to do kind of a mix of all of it. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, that's kind of what I'm vaguely doing. It's just like, I'll try almost anything that comes my way and <laughs> just see how much time I can kind of cram in. Do I need as much sleep? No, I can rein that back for a few more years. <laughs> You know, you know I have a question for you, Mike. Yeah, go ahead. You you touched on it a little bit, and I was wondering why you are working through all the, all of these religious podcasts. Like when we met, you were teetering on anti-religious, mm-hmm. and you you've changed over the years. And I want to know what what is it that you are trying to find by talking to all of these people because. The shows are very interesting and so many wonderful points are being made. And I'm wondering, are are you searching for something in yourself? Are you just curious? Are you trying to share with the world these curiosities that you have? What's going on that is causing you to invite these people to speak about religion? I think that all religions have the piece or a piece, at least a piece of the puzzle of what reality is. I think that science has some and I think the philosophy has pieces and I think that, you know, 
even down to the core of human uh, experiences you know our sight that's one piece of the puzzle is in my reality the existence i live part of it is sight part of it's hearing all those sort of things so i feel like every religion has some answers or an answer or a perspective or a metaphor that makes sense of understanding our way in the universe because i believe that for the most part when done correctly I think re- religion and drugs, it sounds very odd, drugs are a very umbrella term and I hate that term, but just so people understand intoxicants and things, they are both, for my view, the core connections that the human body and the human mind can have to inverse versions of reality. So religion is trying to understand how the reality outside of your direct sort of um, sphere, in a sense, how everything else is made, how everything else is working, why all these crazy things happen. And then I feel like in the inverse, when done correctly with things like a DMT or a psilocybin mushrooms, and there are ways you can achieve these things without uh, taking intoxicants, you can do uh, intense meditation, etc. But it's just an easy, quick way to kind of delve into it, is that that's your personal sort of introspection you're kind of looking inward i feel like religion and a lot of it is kind of looking outward and a lot of um drugs and broad times is looking inward and i'm not saying i've done loads and loads of different drugs and i'm doing lots and lots of different drugs or anything like that but what i'm saying is there's a lot of intrigue there for both of it and because i can't experience some of the things that religious individuals have experienced or experience certain things that people who have taken certain uh, hallucinogens they're two things that i've just always been very intrigued by because i feel like they have they have threads to the core of human existence. I think they, the way you can perceive the the different reality, because that's what intoxicants do. So alcohol does in certain ways, but you know, less in less visual sense. It changes how you see reality. It changes how you interact with people, how your moral barriers go down with alcohol, all kinds of things. Cannabis and loads of other ways. You know, all all different intoxicants make your own reality different, and the way that you interact with the world different. But I think that religion is kind of the inverse. It's almost how you're watching the world react with you, how you are interpreting when you get, um, you know, when something bad happens to you. Some people will blame someone or something. Some people will be like, that's part of God's plan. That's part of this. And I just think that religion has so much knowledge within it. And I feel like it gets brushed aside by a lot of people who are atheists or agnostic and like i have done because they ignore certain core values because of the brush that media and also inhuman fighting under the guise of religion and you know all the oil wars and all that sort of stuff over uh, in the middle east and things like that all these different elements and things and then extremists adding fuel to that fire and i just think all of these things kind of make it a lot messier and i think for a while i was perceiving religion as a purely negative thing that had no value and i think after speaking with people and finding out what it means to them i'm kind of understanding what value it has in our world and i'm just kind of taking bits and pieces from each of it you know that that's kind of what i'm doing in a way uh, cuz my whole intrigue is just people and how i can exist in this world the best and how i can help others figure things out themselves you made two points dude um first one is you said several times about understanding and there is a scripture in in the book of proverbs the book of wisdom that says in all you're getting get an understanding so being inquisitive is just puts you in on that path asking the questions doing the uh, doing the work the interviews getting an understanding which kudos second you made mention of you know uh, how certain people think whether they are uh, atheists, possibly secular humanist, maybe agnostics. I've I've actually been running on running into quite a few um, atheistic videos on TikTok, and the craziest thing is you know I've heard some of the arguments coming from some of these people, and their arguments are absolutely valid they're warranted. What it is that they're saying is absolutely true um, because they're coming from a standpoint of logic. Okay. Lot, it, Vulcan logic rules, period. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I totally get it. And again, their questions and their statements logically are absolutely valid. However, when it comes to living a life of faith, logic, intellectualism, and reasoning are out the window. Because faith is something that we go off of blindly. This chair that I'm sitting in is not guaranteed to hold up 270 pounds. 
but I'm sitting in it by faith that it will. When I step outside that step outside the door, I'm putting the key in the ignition and just by faith, praying that the car starts. And I take my drives to Salt Lake City or L.A. for work. I pray that the car is going to get me there and get me back safely. And I'm doing so in faith. Uh, we have literally no idea what the next five minutes brings, let alone like the next five years. So um, all of this, this entire life existence is literally faith. We have no control over our heartbeat except for those who are in deep transcendental meditation <laughs> who can possibly, maybe possibly slow it down. We have what a three minute max, maybe window of, you know, controlling our diaphragm. But when all is said and done, we don't really have any control over what's going on because the moment that we lay our heads down to sleep, we are not guaranteed to wake up. So, um, again, logic is out the window because we have no understanding of, go to sleep. Am I going to get up tomorrow? Yeah, dude, I'm in control of my destiny. In five years, I'm going to be this massive billionaire. And bro, you have no idea. Your soul might be required of you just that night. So, um, again, you know, I know it sounds from coming from a worldly, a worldly standpoint, it sounds absolutely ridiculous and bat crazy. Um, no, it doesn't make any logical sense. Okay, that's fine. Do you live your life? I pray you do well. But 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 you're you're spewing hate. No, that is not the context of for for which it is that I follow. What I do is I spew love. Now sometimes, no, let me take that back. All the time, the most powerful love, form of love that I show is by telling you the truth. Now, a lot of people think that telling the truth is hate and intolerance. That's because we now live in a marshmallow society. People want it sugar-coated. People want it candy-coated. You can't say that. It offends me. You can't breathe like that. It's offensive. <laughs> what, what can you do? So even, even telling the truth. Who was it? Orwell. Orwell says in, uh, was it times of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. How can telling the truth be revolutionary? We'll leave that up into the, we'll leave that out, out there into the ether and hopefully somebody will come up with a valid answer. <laughs> You know, I would argue, BZ, that the the greatest thing that you do is setting a good example. It's not telling the truth. It's setting a good example. It's all of the things that you do. It's saying, I am a Christian, and then living a life of what you believe a Christian should be. It's your lack of hypocrisy that is, to me, your greatest example. Bless your wonderful heart, uh, because the situation is, for me, uh, and she just keeps, just keeps hitting all the right notes, man. Um, integrity is absolutely paramount. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you don't just talk the talk. You have to walk the walk. And on top of that, um, just to dovetail on what you just said, honey, is, uh, as opposed to setting an example, I would actually rather be the example. That's why I do what it is that I do. Because when all is said and done, there's always somebody out there watching, waiting to point the finger and waiting for me to slip up. That's why I say, despite the fact that I'm being a, a Christian super soldier and you know all of that stuff, I'm not perfect. There's going to be somewhere, somehow, I'm going to mess up. It is absolutely inevitable. I'm, I'm going to do something wrong. Um, I'm going to get mad. Most people have never even seen that. Most people can't even comprehend that, me getting mad. Um, but it, it's going to happen. It's absolutely going to happen. And I'm not immune. I'm absolutely not immune. So I'm going to fail. But one of my prayers, literally, every day is, Lord, help me not to fail you. I may fail the world, but 
help me not to fail you. And I know somewhere, some way, somehow throughout the course of the day, it's going to happen. I'm going to fail him somewhere, some way, somehow, because I'm not perfect, but I still pray the prayer in hopes that, you know, the day comes that I don't fail him. And do you, um, I'll start with you sort of Tonya with your, with achievements, with things that you have achieved, how do you perceive that in what you attribute to God? How, how much of that do you say is God and how much of that would you say is potentially yourself? Like you touched on it a little bit earlier, but I wonder if you could just explore that a little bit more for us. I don't think that I have achieved anything without God. I believe God was there the entire time. Now, did God take the steps for me? No. But God was there to guide my steps or to help me learn what I, what I needed to learn before I could make those steps. And I believe a huge part of that is my relationship with God. The fact that I am asking for this information. I'm seeking it. I'm not just sitting here waiting for it to drop in my lap. All right. When is my inbox going to be full of opportunities that I didn't, you know, I didn't apply for, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm here waiting, <laughs> you know, you have to put in the work. And part of that is having that faith that BZ was talking about, mm. having the faith that you are going to put into the, put in the work. And then these achievements are going to follow. My journey absolutely has not been as I planned which is a challenge for me because I am a control freak and I want to be in charge of every possible thing in my life, but I know that that's not the way. So what can I control? The things that I say to myself, the things that I put out into the world and the communication I have with God, I can control those things and trust that if I take the, the proper steps, what, wherever this leads me will be where I'm supposed to be. Slim just made a very, whether you realize it or not, woman, you are singing like Mariah today. <laughs> um, she just made a, made one of the, the biggest points there is in, in living a life of faith. And there's even scripture about it. It says, faith without works is dead. Work without faith, uh, works without faith is dead. Um, and I came up with my own mantra, um, you know, uh, take action and faith and have faith in taking action. Because the thing is, they have faith and action have a symbiotic relationship. You can't do one without the other. So, um, you know, in the relationship department that she just spoke on, um, you know, I look at it like, yeah, we do have a relationship. We also, you know, I look this at this thing as a partnership as well. Um, I have my part. The Lord has his part. He'll do his, he, 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 he will do his part. I can't do his part. I have to do my part. And as long as I do my part and he takes care of his part, which I absolutely have 200% faith in, then all business will be taken care of as it's supposed to be. And she also mentioned earlier about, you know, I just need to know how she's starting with the what? The how to do the how will show up if you're walking and leading in faith. Yeah, and it's, it, with religion, and I think, I think a lot of the issues that people have uh, with religion when they're looking in is is that kind of thing is the idea of they they view it as contradictions i think when it's the idea of free will but also god controlling things in air quotes because i think controlling is the wrong word but the what i've been kind of noticing is a common thread uh, among a lot of religion and also a lot of general spirituality and just a lot of people there's the term um i've described it as the pull uh some people describe it as intuition or gut feeling or things like that across civilization um in a variety of different ways <laughs> people of different ages and demographics and religions always talk about there's just something that you kind of have a, a feeling about you know there's been uh there's certain neuroscientists who've said oh it's your brain and it's when you're in a situation you can kind of uh, absorb so many uh, actions at once and things that your subconscious uh, kind of translates it and puts in your conscious to make you get that feeling there's there's are air quotes explanations for a lot of these things but i've just noticed that there's things I've even experienced which would that specific explanation I gave wouldn't make sense 
without it being something greater, without me being able to essentially sense vibrations throughout the world. And in with a scientific-minded thing, if you think of particles and molecules and things, in theory, you could do that. So who's to say that there isn't a being or a deity or something which is very lightly putting these signals out there to guide one person? And you can amplify that in a, a lot of ways. And the reason I'm mentioning that aspect of things is because although it's not necessarily something uh, that I... Um, fully that's not my necessary and interpretation of things but that's one way that one could describe things like this and so i just know this is common thread of something giving telling you and i think that since especially my dad passed away i've been really trying to listen to that gut feeling because i found that whenever i've ignored it 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 things always don't go how i seem it's always kind of that thing you said tonya it's like oh no i know what i need or want in this scenario and then you go against the gut feeling be it in a relationship or all kinds of variety of things and then afterwards you go oh no i really shouldn't have done that and you remember and there's other times you you have a feeling about something you're i'm going to act on that for one reason or another something is telling me to do this in some way and i've noticed that people who generally follow that be it salesmen who follow their gut instinct uh, be it religious individuals they generally speaking uh, as long as they're not like psychopathic or anything they generally see have like a more positive life and generally do more good out there so with when people hear the voice of god the idea of god speaks to you and that kind of idea i wonder if uh, i'll ask you both but tonya first of when you hear that when you hear sort of god communicating with you in some way is there a way that you could uh potentially describe it or a feeling you get or just any way when you hear god speaking to you or the voice of god or the deity itself how how do you kind of internalize that how do you how do you explain that to someone if you if words can <laughs> It happens in different ways. There are times where I don't know that situation is happening and maybe I'm being kind of dense to it because I'm being resistant because, you know, I want to be in control. But there are other times where I open myself up to it and it's like, okay, I, I'm asking this question, help me. And I will say more than 90% of the time I get hit with something where it's just like, mm, there's the answer. And how did I not think of that myself? And thank you for, for giving me what I, you know, Thank you for giving it to me. I've been sitting here and struggling with this thing by myself, not asking for help. And then I ask and the answer just arrives. So it's kind of a relief. It's like a weight lifted. First, it's kind of like a punch in my chest. It's weird. It's like a, a small punch, but it's not painful. It's just the force of it. And then a release. Just, oh, there, I have the answer. Now I can proceed. That, my happy people, is what is called revelation. Hmm. So um, I actually, I, I spoke on this yesterday on my broadcast, which is on Facebook, um, and my subject matter was perseverance. And I woke up, um, was it Tuesday? I woke up Tuesday with this whole funk of, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like doing that. I'm sick of auditioning. Why don't they just offer me parts? I'm good enough to do the work. Why don't they just give me the promos and the TV, the, the, the TV promos and the movie trailers that I want? I'm good enough to do the work. Just you all know me. I don't feel like doing this anymore. I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. And every time I've always discussed the entire situation with people about, I don't feel like it, but I know like it. And so it's like, okay, no, I don't feel like going to the gym, but I know like I need to go to the gym. Why? Because at the end of that gym session, I'm going to come out on top. There's something that you mentioned here, Mike, uh, just a second ago um, in regards to, you know, you have this oots and it's telling you to go in this direction and you go in that direction and there's an adverse effect in the Bible that's called being that's, that's called being shipwrecked. Because you took the wrong direction. Um, there's a, there's a, a lot of people, a slew of people out there who go against the grain, um, in the direction that they're supposed to go in. I, I got this saying from a, a, a middle school. I was walking the halls a couple of years ago. It says doing the right thing isn't always easy, but it's always right. So, um, when I finished that whole, I don't feel like it vent. I'm like, all right, so what do I know? Okay. I got, I got it off my chest. 
So it was, I, I literally felt the weight off of my chest after I was like, literally, I guess I was going through a pout spell. I was pouting. I'm like, dude, come on, man. I'm dope at this. I can do this. I can do this. And then I got past the pout. And then I'm like, all right, so there's somebody I'm supposed to help today. Um, there's something that I'm supposed to do today. I'm like, oh, hey, let me look at my emails. Okay, I got a couple of auditions. Let's go ahead and get these auditions knocked out. Um, I'm currently working on an audio book. All right, I got to you know, knock a couple of chapters out in this joint. Um, so it's like, all right, well, cool, dude. Just you know, keep it moving. Um, we don't know who we're going to help today. Then all of a sudden, one of my voiceover students hits me up, and she's going through a funk. I'm like, this is who I'm supposed to help. And then coming from that point, one of my close voiceover buddies who just recently moved here, uh, I'm not sure sure if he, I, I want to say that I introduced you to him, a gentleman named Trey Mosley. Um, but maybe not, not just yet. But um, he just moved here recently and he gets me up and uh, he's like, man, I was just about to go to bed last night. And he's got like an exercise uh, system at his house. He's got weights. He's got a treadmill, the whole spiel. And he's working on, you know, uh, bettering his his physical health. And he goes, I was getting ready to go to bed. And uh, I looked at the weight, the weight set. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go to bed. Then he stopped, headed to the weight set and sat down. And then did 30 minutes worth of weights. He didn't feel like doing it, but he did it. Um, there's a gentleman I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with named Andrew Tate, who's uh, pretty much one of the most banned human beings on planet Earth. Um, but he put something out there that says the dude who goes to the gym when he doesn't feel like it is always going to beat the man who doesn't feel like it, but he can go. So, um, when you, there, there's just a, we get this, this uts in our gut that lets us to know the direction we need to go in. Um, and a lot of the times, just like Tanya was just saying, you know, we're just being stubborn and control freaks. There are a lot of people out there who don't want to submit to a, an authority greater than their own. They're stubborn that way. Um, no, I don't want to go that way. No, I don't want to do it that way. Um, and then they wind up shipwrecked. Man, I should have. And that was one thing that I told myself that I did not want to do when I decided to go full on in this entertainment game was live a life of coulda, woulda, shoulda. Yeah, Just you always go got to do it. Always, always got to. That's what I, it's like. That was the best advice uh, anyone can give to someone to achieve their dreams. Just start doing it. If you want to be a writer, just start writing. If you want to be a filmmaker, just start trying to make movies. If you, you know, if you want to do voiceover, then you've got to start just putting yourself out there and trying things and, you know, exercising that muscle. And yeah. it's it's the is the thing. It's I think it's one of those things that when people like uh, people say to me sometimes, like you're really busy all the time. I say yeah, because I'm passionate and I love uh, doing these things. But it's also the. I have a goal, but the goal isn't really a goal. It's just I've got a direction and I'm just kind of everything. As I go in this direction with podcasting and with other sort of close elements of my life and assisting people and generally putting out good vibes and things like that, it's like the more I do that, generally the better my life is. So I'm just going to kind of keep on doing that. And one kind of thing I've been thinking about recently um, with the idea of God is in my, a, a theory I've had about what God actually is, is it a physical being or, or what, or this idea of this deity beyond our, our comprehension, is we're all made from the same matter, you know, uh, however one defines creation, we're all made from the same basic, you know, stuff. And so in so at some point, we were probably all the same thing, and then it just kind of split apart, whether you think it's the Big Bang or any sort of other elements, you know, it was, everything was created from something, you know. And so this idea of, what if God is the, every conscious being feels like they're a part of God and interprets God in a different way because God was this being and then it fragmented itself into billions upon trillions of different consciousnesses in different levels of sentience and all kinds of things, be it a tree or be it a human. And each one of these is a fragment of this ethereal being 
And that's a way that we all can be sort of together, how we have this feeling, how all these kind of elements. Now, I'm not saying this is something that yourselves necessarily would align with, with your uh, beliefs, but it's just been an idea of how all human consciousness is connected. And I kind of view it almost as light and energy coming off our heads and shooting into sort of the, the stratosphere and all living beings just contributing to that kind of universal consciousness. And if that consciousness put together, that could be whatever one's interpretation of god is and that's how it can know everything and be everything because it it literally is everything if you know what i mean that's almost a way how i kind of rationalized the idea of god not saying you two have to agree with that but i thought i'd throw that Use out the there force well that's it i, <laughs> I mean love, it's your yeah. force description <laughs> yeah it is my, my force is literally everyone's beings of light are made from the same matter you know it's probably the reason why star wars is connected with me for so <laughs> so long is because yeah i basically believe all of that stuff now and people have mocked me before before and i'm like but it makes a lot of sense to me <laughs> what's your midichlorian count <laughs> not, <necessarily. laughs> not, not that sort of not that part yeah. we don't need to measure those things we just just be <laughs> well, the thing is um dude you, you I always tell people that, you know, while you're walking in this walk of faith to stand out, especially when it comes to entertainment, because you have to step out to find out. And while you're stepping out find to find out, you have to stand out. Um, there's one thing about being a standout or a maverick or a pioneer. There's always going to be adversity who will ridicule you. Always. Does it matter? For not being average, Hindi, for not just following following the, the crowd norm. and doing as they yeah. do for stepping out in ways that they're afraid to try. Yeah. And, and if, if not, if not afraid to, um, they're, uh, defiant in doing it. So, um, there's, there's a scripture in the word that says, um, narrow is the gate and straight is the path to life. And there's only going to be a few that find it. But broad is the gate or path and to the way of destruction, and there'll be a lot of people there who find it. The narrow path are the outliers, those who decide to go in a different direction. Um, I've been told I'm narrow-minded. Thank you. I appreciate that. That means that I'm following <laughs> the right path that I'm supposed to be on. So um, I don't think you're narrow-minded, but I do think yeah, that you're on the right um, path. Well, the thing is, is she called, she called me that because I told her something that was truthful and it just did not jive with where the, the direction that she was going in. I would, I didn't lie about anything. I just told her, Hey, look, this is what's up. You know, this is why I don't call you or talk to you as much as I did because of your narrow minded view. Um, okay. Thanks. I really appreciate the compliment. So as I was saying, and boy, oh boy, did her fe fe her feathers ruffle. You know, I want but, to use your analogy and piggyback off of that. Please. Because do. there's this narrow path, right? Mm -hmm. Th this is the narrow opening mm -hmm. that we can find and we know how to get to this. And part of our job is to lead others to it. But if you try to force someone where they don't want to go and you try to force them into it and shove them in, Yep. Now you've blocked the path for others that do know the way. Now you've blocked the path for others to get in. That's not the way you're supposed to handle it. Yep. Lead, but don't force. Precisely. And so, like I said earlier, you know, um, it's my job to, you know, there. somebody came at me. Dude, you're trying to conform people. I'm like, no, I'm not. My job is not to conform anybody. My job is to inform them. Now, what they By the way, conforming is not being a Christian because yeah. most people <laughs> don't believe in the way yeah. of Christianity. <laughs> so um, it's like, look, they're already my conforming. Job is, <laughs> my job is information, not confirmation. So um, if you, I'll just tell you what it is that I know. If you ask me, I'm not just about to, no, nah, dude, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't this. No, uh -uh. especially when it comes to adults. No, uh, uh, hey, dude, why are you always smiling? Are you sure you want to hear this? Yeah, what's going on? And then I'll tell them. Um, one dude walks up to me at work. Well, when I was working, um, uh, I think he's from Brazil. He goes, "Hey, man, are you Christian?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yeah, I can tell. I can see the light of God on you." 
I heard the theme to 1978 Superman for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can deal with that. Um, may I, ask I hadn't you? said anything, not word one to this dude. He just walks up to me and asks the question. And still to this day, he and I are super cool. That that is really uh, is impressive. I want to ask with your relationship with God, and uh, this may get into personal territory just in case, uh, so you don't have to el- elaborate on everything, but have you always been a follower of your faith um, since you were young, like your entire life? Was it there a, a point in your life in which you kind of turned away, turned back? Like I'm intrigued by each of your respective journeys. If I start with you, BZ, what, was, uh, what would you, if you could tell us? Yeah, absolutely. I was I was made aware of God's existence when I was young by my mom. Um, she didn't raise us in the church. She just made a she just made us aware of its existence. Um, and so it's like, all right, cool. Well, I mean, I always knew that somewhere, some way, somehow, there was something greater than me. That something greater than us. It's something infinitely greater. I just I just had this instinct since I was young, but I never, you know, I've over the years, I was off and on, off and on, off and on, but I didn't fully embrace it until, um, late 2009. And I'm like, you know, something I'm doing something wrong and I need to switch something up. And it, and literally, um, I had to lose everything in order for me to get to where I am now. Um, my family, my job, um, my, my house, I had to lose everything. And for a lot of people, um, they're not aware of this. I, I got this from a song. It said the dude, the dude says, um, I had to lose in order to win. Um, and the craziest thing for me is even still to this day, because I am so used to losing winning feels strange but yeah, i well, don't complain thank you for sharing that it's it, it's a very honest thing to you know openly speak about that and i do hugely appreciate it and it's a it's very it's inspiring when someone such as yourself has and not in a bad way but in a sunny disposition in in the right way you know someone who Whenever I talk to you or whenever anyone in the sort of comics emotion family or extended family, whenever your name is brought up, it's always with smiles and it's always with how amazing BZ is and how nice he is and all these sort of these little extra steps, these details that you just brighten up people's lives just by being, you know, yourself, your true self. And it's nice to hear sort of your relationship with God does foster that. And I'm sorry to hear that you did have to go through hardship, but as you're kind of your uh, almost mission statement is it's that kind of thing where you the adversity is what makes you you that's what you get through the adversity you know as i always say is you know my show is always you know my dad passing away worst thing ever happened to me best thing ever happened to my character changed my life the most positive way that anything ever has so it's it's a very intriguing with that so with tonya would you like to tell us about how your relationship with god started or sort of the, the journey that you've been on i did not have a christian upbringing at all I always felt like there was a God. I don't know why I felt this because it wasn't something that was taught to me. So I can't remember any point in my life where I didn't believe in God. Jesus is a different thing. I used to have kind of a a longing to be Jewish. I felt they were the chosen people. And so I didn't quite understand the religions because, again, I had no teaching, no upbringing, But there was something about Jewish people that I was drawn to. And and I was an aspiring Jew, I guess, you know, (laughs) like I want to be chosen people. I want to be God's chosen one. And so when I was in my teens, my mother began a religious search, a journey, and she asked if I wanted to go on this journey with her. She was not forcing me. She was just asking. She's like, I'm looking for something do you want to do this with me? And so we, we investigated, we went to Buddhist churches or, you know, we went to ceremonies. We, we tried out all of these different things and found things we liked in all of them. 
And it was strange because we came to Christianity separately, but it was very close to the same time. And it wasn't due to any Christian church that we went to. It was just the strangest thing. I did something that I should not do. I I asked God for evidence. I, you know, I was new at talking to God and I was nervous about the entire thing. And it's like, you know, I'm just, I need you to show me proof. Please just give me evidence that this is real. And it happened. Now, later I learned you're not supposed to ask for proof. You're supposed to go <laughs> off of faith. But <laughs> I had faith that I would receive an answer so that I knew. <laughs> Yeah. It's amazing mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's it's always something interesting that i find with because ev- everyone kind of finds their their way at a different point in their life and then they will have sort of different interpretations so i wonder if yourselves have considered this or if you follow what certain scriptures say but what do you think when you think of god what do you see like is it a physical manifestation of a human is it this so if i say yeah, what does God look like? What do you see when you kind of visualize God? What would you say if I go to you, Tonya, first? For me, it's more of an energy. It's not a, a visual. It's not a specific person. Because we are all created in God's image. However, we don't all look the same, do we? <laughs> we do not. <laughs> so there must be some kind of mold, but look at the different heights and shapes and sizes and skin colors of all people it's not to me it's ever-changing energy like it's this feeling and this kind of like an embrace of energy that is how i picture god and that's how i feel god and just to segue a little bit when i was on that journey i felt a lot more comfortable and loved and close to god when i was in the Buddhist community than in the Catholic community or the Episcopalian community there, you know, I was opening myself up spiritually where I felt nurtured and safe with Buddhism. I felt attacked and hurt in those other two communities. And I don't think it's God. I think it's some of the people that have shaped these things. And it was scary, you know, being so young, it was scary. Like, why am I feeling like I'm under attack something's something is hurting me like something is attacking me and nothing bad you know i don't see anything bad going on around me but because i am a very spiritual person and i'm a passionate person i think because i opened myself up to it it i was really sensitive to the energy that was present so i'm not anti-catholic by any means because it's just a religion you know it's not like that's not god it's a it's the way people practice that but there is something in those two arenas and episcopalian is very close to catholicism something has happened that has tainted that it probably wasn't the intention initially but you know people have a way of of darkening goodness mhm uh, and what about yourself bz same to you yeah um and see, the thing is, is like I, like I spoke on earlier, that it's for that reason that um, I follow the uh, apostolic doctrine because we're all flawed. And once all of the, like what Tanya was just saying, like once all of the denominations started kicking in, that's when a lot of division and war and the crusades and this and that and the other, that's when all of that stuff started going down. And now you have all these different denominations that are going, I'm right. And it's like, well, look, man, uh, you all can go on ahead and be right. Let me go ahead and head left and just go ahead and, 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 and stay in the scripture, do my very level best to be. Now, the thing is the word, the term is Christian and the term Christian means Christ like so Mm -hmm. i'm gonna do my very level best to 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 do what he did he didn't live and didn't live and operate as a hypocrite he spoke in love he spoke the truth um and let me just go ahead and just follow his lead um because when all is said and done he is and 
the word says it, he is uh, the living word manifested in flesh. So let me go ahead and follow the lead of the dude. <laughs> Period. So um, so when it came when it comes down to all those different denominations and whatnot, it's like, yeah, I'm good. If you got a question, I'll tell you what it is. Um, uh, I'll tell you what it is um, uh, down the line. Uh, if you have a question, I'll answer it to the best of my ability. If I don't know it, somebody else does. Uh, the word says that God is spirit and he's seeking out those who worship him in spirit and in truth. So um, it's like, all right, cool. I don't have a problem with that. Um, so what you're saying John, is Jesus is enough. <laughs> all day, every day. <laughs> so um, and, and, and actually, you'll see me. Uh, on on social media with hashtags either uh, Jesus everything or Team Jesus, period. Um, so and now of course there are there are other not, uh, other names. I think uh, his Aramaic name is uh, Yeshua. His his Hebrew his Hebrew name is Yahweh Shai. But when all is said and done, I'm making certain that I am worshiping the one same individual. So um, again, spirit and truth. That is literally how it is that I move in spirit and in truth. And P and thankfully, thankfully, people can actually see the physical manifestation of it in me. Um, and Aventus, when do you feel uh, closest to God? Like, as in, I'd be intrigued. I'm sure there's two answers, which is doing something in particular, and then in a certain place. Like, I always find that when I'm the closest with the universe in general is in, like, a forest, for example. There's quite a few forests around me and things. I, I love doing that. My brother always feels close when he's uh, next to, like, a stream. Normally in a forest as well, but next to, like, a stream of running water. Is there sort of a, a place anywhere in the world, you could have been there once or go there regularly, where you feel the most connected uh, with God? And then also, if there's also a thing that you specifically do that makes you feel the way if it's prayer or if it's eating a chocolate bar <laughs> if it's in the gym, <laughs> whatever because there's a lot of things <laughs> cheesecake. <laughs> that's a good no, one <laughs> um actually craziest thing is um uh, my church home is not even a two-minute drive from where i am i'm also on the board of directors for that church i have access to the building when i go in there by myself because every now and again, I'll just, I'll, I'm like, you know what? Let me head over to the sanctuary really fast. And I'll go into the sanctuary. I'll be in there alone. And it's like, hey, let's chop it up. And I could be there for hours doing just that, whether I'm sitting in silence or whether I'm in actual prayer. But it's like, yeah, that's that's what that's where it is for me. That, and strangely enough, my commute to Los Angeles. Hmm. Is that just because it's a really nice sort of? What well, nice is it? Because of the? Is it like a specific road? That there's just not like nothing on that you drive for a while, or is it because it just takes so long? You're just kind of isolated. Like, is there something specific about that drive? Well, is it LA specifically, say, or is it why you're going? No, it's it's actually. Um, I always call LA the home of my soul, but um, no, it's uh, not why I'm going. It's just the fact that um, when I'm going, when I take that drive, I've I've made that drive for over twenty years, and it's come to be. Uh, a safe meditative space for me the drive does and i and and you know every now and again you know i i found myself chanting for hours you are my peace you are my strength you are my wisdom you are my peace you are my strength you are my wisdom throughout the entire drive just just going in that and knowing that and dealing with it again for me personally and again, this is me and me only personally. I don't I don't delve too much into my emotions and feelings. Now I do know that emotions and feelings have a purpose. Um, but if those emotions and feelings are misused or abused, 
man, that can turn into a very not so beautiful situation. So um, I wouldn't say that I have my emotions fully in check, but I do not allow them to dictate, especially major decisions that I'm about to make in life. So um, it's like, all right, Lord, you got me. Um, let's do this. How are we going to do this? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? Uh, let's just keep it pushing. So whenever I make the drive to LA, not so much for when I go, when I drive to Salt Lake city, it's just LA. I don't know why. And I think it's just because of, I would say probably the amount of time that I've been doing it and I've, I've, I've rested in the comfort of that drive. So I don't know. I can't, I can't explain it any further than that. Well, you've done a great job. It's, it's very intriguing. Yeah, it's it sounds like you've you. carved out that meditative space and it's just where you meet. It's lovely. And you, yourself, Tonya, same question to you. You know, as much as I appreciate nature and I will stand in awe of it when I'm there, I don't necessarily feel connected to God because I'm seeing it. It's I'm appreciating God's work, but it's not part of me. I would say I, I receive a spiritual high after I've done something creative. You know, if I've been in a manuscript for a while or a writing project, and as I'm coming out of it, I will feel a spiritual high. If I'm coming off set after, you know, great day on set and I've nailed my lines and I did my stuff, it's like, this is my life. I get to do this <laughs> because it's amazing. Storytelling is amazing. And you're connecting yep. with the world doing these things. Yeah. It is a privilege to have this on my plate. So not while I'm doing it, not while I'm on set, because I'm focused. I'm the character. I'm not even really me when I'm on set sometimes. But as I come out of it and I return to myself, I get the spiritual high. And then the other thing is when I do good and don't twist the English. I, I don't mean doing well when I am working on a charity event or I am you know, like last night, I led a discussion on stamped, anti, you know, the anti-racism book, Racism, Anti-Racism and You. That was not an easy thing going into it. And I was exhausted. I had a full day of work and, you know, writing and deadlines and all of these things. And then it's like, I still have this conversation that I have to lead, which is potentially volatile. And, you know, I'm already getting people on on social media, asking me questions or, you know, giving me private messages about why are you talking about this? And, or how are you able to talk about this? How is it that you can talk about this without getting any pushback? It's like, I, I can't, I can't talk about it without the pushback, but I'm doing it anyway. But after I did it, after I dealt with the challenges of it, it's this elation of, I did it. I did the thing. I did this thing that I'm supposed to do. I am put here to help people with this. This is part of my job because people will listen to me. I don't know why. It's, you know, part of the flowers journey. But if I have the floor, I'm going to use it for good. I'm not going to use it for myself. I'm going to use it to help others. And that's one of those times where it's like, oh, thank you. Like, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I think that has to do with the creative aspects and me using these platforms to help others in the world. Make certain that you all pay attention to what she just said. And I've said it already a couple of times before. Pushback. Always going to get it. Mm -hmm. If you're not getting it, you're not doing anything. You're not, you're not, you're not stirring the pot. You're not, you know, so something, something right isn't happening. If you're not doing it, well, if you're not doing it right, something right isn't happening. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, there's going to be adversity. I'm actually thinking of, um, a conversation between the Avengers <laughs> 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 and it was, it was vision explaining the fact that their their strength what 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 was what was the line their strength invites challenge yeah civil war right yeah I, they, yeah i think it was civil war yeah their very strength invites challenge 
And then what's what's what the, what's going going to happen after that? What's the end result? Conflict. You so decide. I'm not to getting something. pushback. I'm not doing enough. It means that I am not pushing envelopes. I am not putting enough out in the world. I'm stagnant, and I can't deal with that. Right. And speaking of stagnant, there's a scripture that the Lord, the Lord Himself said. He goes, uh, "You either going, you either need to choose to be hot or be hot, be cold. But if you're going to be lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth." <laughs> That's and that trust that is scripture. Now, in my Bible, it's written in red. That means that the Lord is speaking. He said it. Choose one. Be hot or be cold. But don't be in the middle, which is stagnation. Don't be stagnant. So make a choice. Um, yeah, make a choice. Absolutely. Don't straddle the fence. There are some people out there I know who are straddling the fence so hard. They have one they have one foot in the word. And then they have the other foot in the world with the heel on a banana peel. <laughs> There's a visual. <laughs> right. And I want to ask as well with, so with uh, linking to what you said uh, earlier, BZ about being in the sanctuary and things, I am actually jealous of that because I've said in the past that the one thing that's the closest that could convince me of um, a godlike deity is not, people or a sunset or you know the laugh of a child it's the architecture of religious buildings there's certain mosques that are incredible there's cathedrals there's churches and it's been something i've always admired and there's one thing i was like you know to, to some degree as well like things like the pyramids which you know in their own way they were you know the egyptians ancient egyptians were worshiping god in you know or gods in their own way it's still some sort of higher power and it's like they managed to do that which to this day is still sort of baffling people how they did that without, you know, modern technology, at least from what we understand they had at those times. And then even just like in slightly less ancient times when you see churches built and you saw like how they were made. And you know, you, you know the uh, the question is, how on earth would they do that? And the answer is, well, with the helping hand of the Lord is, is, is the right answer, I would say. So it's one of those interesting things where it's like the just architecture of some of those buildings I just I can't get enough of whenever me and Megan go anywhere uh, in the UK and we can go to like a cathedral or because one of the blessings in uh, the UK is that we have so much history and lots of cool castles but also cathedrals and things like that so I want to ask about sort of just uh, we're, we're getting towards the end here but religious architecture and things like that just throwing that out there I love it Obviously, Abizi, you clearly love it as well, and I'll ask you in a sec. But Tonya, do you have any sort of favorite uh, ones you've been to or any connections to any general uh, religious buildings? Or are religious buildings not necessarily your bag? Because I know, obviously, you spoke earlier about sort of being more uh, drawn to sort of uh, the Buddhist, I believe, temples and things. But t please tell us. not the building. It was just the the energy that was in there. Mm. Yeah, it was the, the environmental energy. And that has to do with some of the people who are practicing mm. it. I don't credit it to the building or the religion itself, because I think that the mentality behind that religion, that that speaks for itself, like that they're coming from a great place. But I, I believe that Jesus is the Lord. That doesn't mean that Jesus hates Buddhists, though, because I don't believe Jesus hates anybody. Right. As for religious buildings, I can look at them and appreciate their beauty. I don't think I have the same awe that you do. And it's strange. As much as I like pretty and clean things, the thing that popped to mind when you were asking the question is Cathedral Canyon, which is, I want to say, maybe an hour, an hour and a half away from where I live. My brother snuck me out of the house one night. Like, we would sneak out for ice cream and stuff. Like, we... <laughs> not going out and do, doing bad things but he snuck me out to take me to this thing he wanted to show me it was like an hour and a half away and it and he is not very religious but he found this cathedral canyon which is kind of like a cathedral it, it's it's not a cathedral building per se but kind of like in a cave a, a little church like creation in a canyon like in a desert canyon and it's just kind of lovely 
Mm. I don't know why it was created. I don't know the history behind it, but it's still there. And you can feel, you can just, you know, again, it's with the energy. You can just feel the energy of this, this place. And it's kind of a nicely kept secret. And you've just told the world and now. <laughs> but they don't know how to get there. No, I know. I know. Well, when I come to Vegas, <laughs> I definitely want to see if I can make some time for that. Um, but it's funny you mentioned about what you think of with religious buildings. Because in my view, whenever I think of like an awesome, amazing church, I I mean, there's some in Italy that I've been to, which are obviously absolutely beyond mind blowing but you know how they were built is questionable in some ways as with many right. things in history um, who built them and yeah. how they get, get the money for them where did that, that kind gold of thing doesn't where, did sit, all, where did all that gold well come from them. where did all those marble right. and st- who those could marble have been with there? that gold yeah like what <laughs> yeah what's that giant ma- like huge solid gold scepter where'd you get that from I wonder but ignoring the you know when I go to this place I try to be optimistic and you know just thinking about how amazing and cool everything looks and then afterwards i'm like me and megan always like yeah where do we think that came from um but i love i, I the ones in italy some of them which are very beautiful and you know shiny and marbly i, I do love but my favorite it's is like gorgeous. an old i love it when they're old I, I love it when you go in there and it's like in my mind's eye when i think of like the perfect church is a it's empty um and b it's like you know gray stone and then in the corners there's still like cobwebs and i think of um i'm trying to remember what it's called um where the holy water usually is what uh the is often there's like a it's like a giant cup but it's coming out the ground made of concrete that thing i imagine that with like co- cobwebs one or two strands just coming off but re- you know when you get the cobwebs that are so thick with dust things that's what i think of <laughs> this I just is a think very of, specific like fantasy. an abandoned <laughs> like an abandoned apocalyptic church that's what i think of is my dream church is go to that sort of thing so bz uh, as we because we will start to wrap up but with you your favorite sort of buildings or religious architecture tell us a little bit about that because obviously you have a connection to one very near you well the thing is speaking of which the one that i go to is literally a storefront well literally that's all that it is it's just a storefront however um some years ago i used to work in the stone and tile trade and i got uh to know a, a lot about marbles granites travertines limestones and um where they're where they're from all the quarries and stuff like that especially in uh europe so then i started looking at the architecture especially in italy and i'm like dude i want to go and see some of that stuff because i mean i've worked with stone for years and i saw i saw some incredible um some some incredible architecture come just from you know some of the 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 stonemasons that I'd worked with, whether they were putting together showers or countertops or you know full fledged bathrooms, whatever the case may be, um, you know some cats they they would make you know tables. It's like this right here is beans compared to what they've been doing over there for thousands of years with these cathedrals, these sanctuaries these uh auditoriums and whatnot i'm like i want to go over there and see that stuff now that i have a greater understanding and idea of where it's coming from what it's made out of what its density is what you know what its strength is all that stuff but i have yet to have made it over to europe yet well when you do let me know because you'll be able to crash. You got a guest room and everything, and the Tony got the offer. <laughs> and also, Megan does speak because she is half Italian, so she speaks Italian, and she has family in the north of Italy as well. And I've been to nice. some of the uh, cathedrals uh, in Bergamo, and there's all kinds of incredible things you can see there. So I'm very lucky in that regard. And Megan's traveled lots of Europe and also speaks fluent Spanish and speaks French. So there's a lot of places to, that it can go. Um, but we will start to wrap up here. I'm sure we could speak about this uh, topic uh, a lot more, and maybe. In the future, we'll uh, have some more jumping off points because it's, it's always something I'm, I'm very intrigued by uh, speaking about, especially when people are passionate about it um, mm-hmm. and such as yourselves. So we'll wrap up. So it's time for the plugs and any last things that you want to say about this conversation to wrap things up. So I'll go with you, Tonya, first. What are you up to? Any last things about the Lord? Uh, and yeah, anything else you want to say? Well, I do want to start with a plug for the Lord, which is I truly believe that the evidence is us knowing each other. I feel so blessed knowing you. What are the chances that we were going to ever come into contact with each other being so far away? And then in addition to that, stay disconnected. 
I met you, I met Megan, I met Tony, I met Rhea and Jack and Steve. It's like all these amazing people. Like I couldn't tease Spider Dan if it weren't for this. (laughs) (laughs) And I feel that blessing. I don't think it's an accident of nature. I feel like it was by design. And because I am so open to the blessings, I am receiving them. And you're receiving them too, whether you recognize them or not. (laughs) Yeah. EZ and I did a project together that was not an amazing project. And it was actually quite it, a lot of terrible things happened because of it. But I'm so grateful for it. It w- And here's the thing. It was one of those projects that I wasn't sure if I should do, but I felt moved to do it. And I, fe- I, I had to pray about it. It's like, there is something for me in this direction. There is a reason I need to do this. I don't know if it's the project, but it's going to lead me to something. And it has led me to many permanent friendships that I wouldn't have had otherwise and other opportunities based on people that I met on that set. So the project didn't go anywhere, but it's, it still led me somewhere. If you know what I mean. Amen. And um, I'm going to go on ahead and confirm what she said, because if it weren't for the project, her and I more than likely Prob- it's a very high probability that we may, may have never met. And if her and I never met, you and I most likely would have never met. No. And same with Steve. And um, so, yeah, it's, you know, <sighs> um, blessings come in many sizes, whether they be small or grand. And the thing is, man, we have to count all of them. That's why when people are at, yo, BZ, what are you, what are you up to? Uh, I am not stressing and counting all my blessings. That's what I'm up to. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, why are you so happy? Um, Check this out. <gasps> you see what I just did, dog? Yeah. What was that? <laughs> you took a breath. Yeah. Y- y- you got that? So people would think something so as, you know, something, quote unquote, as mundane as drawing breath is just, you know, everyday happenstance. No, it's not. It's every day a blessing. And also, Slim, you just touched on, uh, yeah, no accidents, no coincidences, no luck. Things happen for a reason. People come into your life for a reason. Some people come into it only for a season. Me and her, our season is, is it seems to be permanent. So that's just <laughs> it's amazing. It's funny. I actually one of my questions was going to be how do you two meet, but it didn't kind of fit its way into the conversation. So now we've got the answer <laughs> anyway. So that's incredible. Uh, so then, yeah. Tonya, obviously you've been up to a lot of things uh, recently, and there's a new initiative that's been launched as well. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? I'll obviously put loads of stuff in the show notes as you and people keep telling everyone how great my show notes are. So I have to keep it up, which I don't That's like right. having to do because it's, it's, it's one of the worst parts. Now you have to set the example. <laughs> yeah, and now I can't, un- I can't ever go back. I look at my show notes for like the first couple episodes. Do you remember when I didn't do anything? Do you remember when I wrote like three sentences and they were the show notes? Do you remember? But no, sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the curse of the competent. Mm. <laughs> Once you do well, people expect it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah. the competent. What have you been up to, Tonya? Well, I don't know when this is going to air, but as of today, two things are being launched. One is Sonic Salon, which is the brainchild of Tony Karina, who we know it. and love. It's kind of this creative melding of readers and writers and you know whether you write short stories or essays or plays he has created a space for the audio version to just be shared with the world and so the first episode is just an explanation of hey this is what we're doing this is who's involved right now but it's also an invitation for others who want to participate because The whole point of this is knocking down the gate, which means not, you know, not dealing with the gatekeepers. We want you to be able to share your work to the world, whether it's already published or not, or if you just want to share it on your own because you can't get it published. This is a place for you to be able to 
share your writing. And if you don't feel comfortable reading it yourself, we will help connect you with a reader. The second episode is Tony's written work, and it is read by Ada McCartney. So right there, we have a pairing of a writer and a reader. And then the third episode is my short story, which I read I read myself because I'm also an actress. And it happens to be kind of an excerpt from my manuscript. So these are the characters that are in my manuscript that's on submission right now. So I'm very excited about that because it launched today. And, you know, I'm in day one. I, I try... I, I, appreciate that Tony trusted me with that. It's a love story. It also happens to deal with a black woman. So it's like black history month and February for Valentine's day. It's just all kinds of good things there. And then there's also the femme on collective podcast, which is doing wonderfully like way better than we would have expected. We've had an Oscar nominee on there. I'm doing active activism, which is helping people to be active in their activism. And after one episode of that, the Ukraine theater reached out to us and said, hey, we've heard active activism. We'd like to do the show, too. So next week, Ada and I are interviewing them. I am interviewing someone tomorrow. I don't want to I don't want to reveal it too soon, but I have two very amazing guests that I'm interviewing tomorrow. And one of them people know, or at least they know her work on a universal scale. And you in particular, I think we're talking about watching it recently. So I'm excited to share what she's doing because just because we're creatives doesn't mean we're not activists or advocates. And I'm excited about that. And then there's Femme on Fitness, which today or this week, it was supposed to be today, but Rhea accidentally launched it early, but that's okay. (laughs) That's Martha Engber. And she's talking about tips to how for how to stay fit this year without putting too much pressure on yourself it's great tips and uh by the way i'm waiting for megan to respond to me because i would like her to be a guest on fem on fitness especially (laughs) since she has a run coming up you can't you can't announce it on facebook and expect me not to jump on that (laughs) i'll 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 get uh, i'll give her a nudge she's quite bad with responding to message to messages she lets them pile up and then she just gets anxious about trying to respond to them all and things like that so I'm like, just every time you go to the toilet, just respond to one, one, th- one step at a time. All right, I don't want to be a toilet reminder. <laughs> well, that's what I, most messages from me to most people in here. I would rather not know that. <laughs> normally. I'm too busy. I'm doing loads of stuff. This is the only time I'm really sat by myself. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> far from podcasting. Um, but amazing, amazing. And obviously there's your website as well, Tonya. Um, in addition, which I'll put in the show notes as well as, uh, you know, I do like hearing from you and things, but also having you on the show is a bit of a pain because I have to put so much stuff in the show notes. It's like, (laughs) oh, yes. Oh, and she's doing this as well. Oh, and she's doing this too. Fine, I'll add that into. And she mentioned there's other things she's doing in a week's time. By the time this comes out, I'll be out. Oh, but add that in there too. So, you know, sarcastically, thanks. (laughs) But truthfully, it's amazing (laughs) what all the things you can do. (laughs) All all the things you can do is incredible. BZ, tell people where they can find you and any stuff that you're up to that you fancy sharing. I know that you're always doing like a million things (laughs) all at once. (laughs) But So you can just give us your plugs, last sort of words before we uh, finish this recording. As always, forever and always, every day, BZ the voice, everything. Can't lose me. You lose me, There's something wrong with you. Period. Venmo, (laughs) PayPal, Instagram, (laughs) YouTube, LinkedIn, everything. Gmail, website, IMDB, everything. BZ The Voice. Cannot lose me. Um, I have, uh, there's a show on Showtime right now called Your Honor, uh, who stars, who's the primary stars, Brian Cranston. Um, I have a couple of episodes, uh, I believe they'll be airing sometime this month. Um, those will be coming out. Um, there's also a movie in post-production right now called winter, spring, summer, or fall. Um, and I am opposite, uh, Jenna Ortega, the young lady who plays Wednesday right now. Um, that I don't know when that movie is coming out, but it's coming. Um, I'm currently working on an audio book. Uh, crazy enough. <laughs> I, I just love the title of it. And it, it normally I wouldn't do audiobooks unless it's kingdom, but 
I'm like, okay, let's see what this is about. And the name of the book is called uh, Why Should White Guys Have All the Wealth? <laughs> so, <laughs> I can see where that took you. <laughs> so, so busy, like, I have right. to ask, are you willing to be a reader for the Sonic Salon for short stories? Yeah, sure. You know you got me, Slim. I just want to put it out there for the rest of the world to know. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, you chose, I was like, you chose the perfect, the perfect time to ask that, Tony. But the worst time to answer that, BZ, because all the comics emotion are like, what did you just say? BZ can re- read out my stuff. <laughs> Try to make sure, hey guys, don't. Oh, they're walk, short don't... stories. They're not going to be full length books. I mean, it's not, not going yet. To be... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, oh, I mean. That's that's pretty much the gist of it right now. Um, I'm going through a ton of auditions right now for major episodic television. Uh, I haven't landed anything yet so far this year. Um, I just got shortlisted on an online video game today, so we'll see what happens with that. How fun would that be? Yeah. So, um, but other than that, you know, just uh, the everyday perpetual grind. Um, you know, nothing big has happened as of yet. I, matter of fact um what is it audible or amazon you can find me there i just found out my fourth book is finally finished and um so you'll find all the audio books that i've narrated most likely on audible just Amazing. pull up my name and you'll find them i'm gonna have a little look i'm gonna have a little delve in i'd love to do that it's amazing um incredible so i'll put links in the description to both of your websites and social media and all that stuff i'm not gonna do all of them because all the show notes will just be busy the voice written with at and then a (laughs) hundred different logos and all that sort of stuff (laughs) it would literally be on this side busy the voice and on this side Ms. Tanya Ta. <laughs> yep. All the shows, all the way down. So I'll just, I'll give them a couple and then give you the website links. That should be enough. But you've both been incredibly generous with your time. Uh, you've both been very honest and open about uh, your connection you know, with something greater. And I really appreciate both of you speaking uh, in all the respects of that. And I'm sure there'll be another conversation to be had as well because there's more things delving a little bit deeper into some of these things but this is an introduction to our lovely listeners of kind of an element of yourselves so just thank you so much for coming on as always it's always a delight to speak with both of you on and off air it's always just so much fun any excuse to be able to speak to you both so just thank you as always and yeah thanks for the listeners as always for listening We, we appreciate you too thank you thank you for providing an opportunity for the conversation mike Amen. My pleasure.